Thank you. Thank you all so much. I could actually hear all of the reflections and today's our Ekadashi focus is the magic of the theatre. And what I also wanted as a sub subline was this is all about making the best use of a bad bargain. Srila Prabhupada often has, has made this statement that we're in this material world making the best use of a bad bargain. And so this to me was kind of like the essence of the magic of Rathyatra. Everyone that we'll be speaking about in all of the situations will be about making the best use of bad bargains. And I feel like this was an, a perfect example for that. I'm like, see, it, you know, a little bit stressing out. There's some, some like, you know, mental anguish. And I'm like, what is up with this camera and all things? And when it works, it works. It's wonderful. And when it needs time to connect, it's transcendentally stressful. Um, but then I got to hear all of these gorgeous reflections that I might not have been able to hear otherwise. And so it was like making the exact best use of a bad bargain. So it, it really, it tied in. There's, there's no one that can tell me. use of the uh, mental anguish. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those moments where if you've ever been around Sachinandan Maharaj for some time, at a certain point, he'll say, you know, Krishna is real, or there really is a Krishna, or, or something to that effect. Or like, I, I believe in Krishna. These situations help us believe. And so that's really what I felt. I was like, there really is a Krishna. And he's always helping us make the best use of this bad bargain, whatever the bad bargain may be. Whether it's a day like Ikadashi coming in, like the bright sunlight illuminating everything dark that's in our lives, which is simultaneously a blessing and a curse. Blessing because it can eradicate all that darkness. Curse because when your room is really dirty and somebody comes in and starts shining lights on all the shadowy parts, you're like, no, 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 wait, don't do it. I didn't vacuum over there yet. So sometimes we, we look at all the things that we don't really want to see. But the upside is that we're really looking at the things that we haven't looked at for a long time. Shining light and clearing out all of that stagnant, just kind of stagnant energy in our spiritual lives, our material lives, our devotional lives, our mental lives, emotional lives, all of the above. So of course we need our Mangala Jarana before we can dive in, even though we've already been diving. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Shtapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Pradati Swapadantitam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare O Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha Patita Nam Pavani Pyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Sri Ikadashi Titi Ki Jai Vaishnava Thakur Ki Jai Sri Jagannath Swami Ki Jai So, this is our second uh, dive into the Ratyatra festival and the pastimes of Lord Jagannath. And we're going to try and pack a lot in here. But it is going to be about the magic of Ratyatra in all ways, types, forms, etc. And um, just before we were, before, before my camera began working, uh, Krishna Daya Prabhu was talking about when you have merchants and they're counting, they will count every, every coin. And in this way, we can count every bead of our japa. The great Saint Tukaram has made kind of a, 
a, a line that stuck with me. And he says that when you become in debt to someone, until you've repaid that debt, everything within your possession belongs to the person who has lent you this, this debt. Right? Everything within your possession belongs to the lender. And it inspired one kind of poem where I kind of asked Krishna, you've lent me such a great deal. I'm not sure how I can settle those accounts, but until I do, everything in my possession, this mind, this heart, this family, everything that I have belongs to you. And so maybe I hope we never settle those accounts. I hope maybe I never get to a point where I think, I've repaid that debt. I can take back my, my portion now. Let there never be a time where there's my portion and Krishna's portion. It's all just Krishna's. So that really reminded me of that point that yes, let us take stock of, of what we have and what Krishna has. Let us with each round take great stock of what's within our hearts because it all belongs to Krishna. There is no way that we can ever repay him. And then likewise, he says, there's never any way that he can repay his devotees. Krishna has famously said, my devotees have given me everything. You gopis have given me everything. And so not Pariyam, I can never repay you. Let, let your devotion, let all of the love within your heart somehow or other repay that debt. Because I can never repay you for what you've given me. When we give our hearts to Krishna, imagine he becomes so indebted. Srila Prabhupada writes with a nectar of devotion that Krishna thinks and, and often ponders, Draupadi called out to me one time and she was in distress. And each time I think that she called out to me saying, Hey Govinda, oh Krishna, I'm, I'm drowning in this ocean of misery, please save me. He says, every time I think about her calling out to me, I become more and more indebted. Krishna has everything. How could he become indebted? Just by us depending on him. So this, this system of loans and debts and repayments is never ending with the Supreme Person. And it's wonderful, both for us and for him. Now, I always used to think when he would tell the gopis, oh, let, let the devotion in your hearts be your own repayment because I can never repay you. I used to think kind of like, yeah, that's an easy way out, Lord. Are you even going to try? You're not even going to try and repay them? You just, you know, let that devotion in your heart be your own repayment. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, and then I was reading the commentary and the transcendental ecstasies of Shivaram Maharaj, who has done such a great deal of, of writing for us Vaishnavas. And in those commentaries on those particular verses within Srimad Bhagavatam, he writes about the mindset of Sri Krishna and how Sri Krishna is almost paralyzed, speechless. What can make the Supreme Person speechless? paralyzed and speechless. It is the devotion of those who love him most. And so with that devotion in mind, with nothing else, all he can think is, I can't repay this. I can't live up to this. How wondrous. The Supreme Person can't live up to the love of, of those devoted gopis. They didn't go to school and get degrees and study about him and then somehow academically make themselves worthy. They were simple cowherd girls, just milking cows, taking care of their daily lives. They weren't thinking and scheming every moment. How can I enter into this divine contract? And, and give as much as I can, I can to just get what I want. This wasn't a business proposition for them. They were not thinking, I will repeat some affirmations daily and manifest 
the love of my supreme person. They were simply giving their hearts over and over again, wholly, completely, openly, vulnerably. And Krishna looks at that kind of love and is speechless to his core and says, I can't, I, how can I, how can I live up to this? How can I even figure out how deep their love goes? Never, ever, ever can I repay this. But the gopis don't let him off the hook. They are kind of stern in their, in their assessment that, well, you should try. You should at least try. And I was very happy about this because until that moment, it was not making good sense. They said, you should at least try. In this endeavor to repay his own debts, today's going to be a lot about debts, I guess. In his endeavor to repay this own debt, he says, fine. I will do the only thing I know. Krishna is known as a very wonderful thief. And so he looks into the hearts of the gopis and he finds all of the treasure there. And Gorgovinda Maharaj often says he plunders it because he's an expert thief, that's what he does. He plunders all of the treasure that is within the hearts of the gopis, including the topmost of all, Srimati Radhika. And what does he do with this, with this treasure that he sees there? He gives it away to everyone. In order to repay that debt of the gopi's love, the only thing he can think of is to try and experience it himself. How can I, how can I repay something I know nothing about? In order to understand that love, he says, I will take on the mood and the role of a devotee. There is a problem. And many of our spiritual acharyas say, there have to be some changes. Srimati Radharani famously, secretly says, your body is not made for this. This love is a very intense, powerful, almost dangerous thing. I have fallen unconscious. I have gone to places of madness where I was not even aware of what my own body was doing. Your body is not made for this. You are tender and soft and the object of love. How could you possibly, how could your body withstand the weight of what this love of devotion will give you? I'm, I'm strong. No, not strong enough for this. Let me cover you with my own form as a means of protection. And so they say that dark, midnight dark Krishna becomes golden Gora, like Srimati Radharani, takes on this golden hue just to take on the mood and the sentiments of her heart to become his own devotee, to somehow understand that love and repay that debt. They also say that he took on this golden form because if Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is our golden Gora, our sweet Gauranga, if he were to look at his own body and see that he was dark like Krishna, somehow this would disturb the mood of servitorship. Wants to dive fully into the mood of being a devotee. Anything that Krishna does, he does it to the most degree. He does it supremely. And so if he's going to be a devotee, he's going to do it supremely. And if he were looking at his own bodily color and thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I am Krishna, the Supreme Person. It would disturb that mood of, I am just yours, oh Krishna, I am your devotee. And so this golden color protected the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what does this all have to do with Rath Yatra? Well, the festival of Ratyatra was an incredibly dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? In this mood, taking the, the love of Srimati Radharani, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always looking for Krishna. He would go into hours of just saying, Ah, Krishna, where is Krishna? Oh, where is my Krishna? And so finally, when he arrives in Puri, 
he runs to the temple of Lord Jagannath. And when he sees Lord Jagannath, there is that same eye-to-eye -eye union that we spoke about last Ekadashi. Where Srimati Radharani seems to be at the last stages of existence. Where somehow or other, they need to find out how to keep Srimati Radhika alive. And so Subhadra Devi goes with the message, Krishna is coming. Baladev goes along with Subhadra Devi. And finally Krishna arrives and we saw how the scent of his body is carried upon a fragrant and fortunate breeze, which is what keeps Radharani alive. And finally, there's that eye-to-eye -eye union. This is what happens when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looks at Lord Jagannath. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is looking and saying, here is my sham. And Gaur Govinda Maharaj is saying that Lord Jagannath is simultaneously looking at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thinking, here, here, here is the mistress of my life. Finally, finally after so long. This is the magic of Ratyatra. Now, of course, how does that tie into making the best use of a bad bargain? After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, everyone, not only were they upset because he had cut off his wonderful, curling, beautiful hair, he was only 24 and taking up the most austere practices of life. They were, they were dumbstruck, confounded, miserable. His mother would think, I would cook you so many preparations and now you'll restrict everything. You're eating, you're sleeping. No one will even know where you are. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always thinking, I just want to go to Vrindavan. And he asked, oh ma, just let me go and, and spend the rest of my days in Vrindavan. Immediately she thought, Vrindavan is too far. If you go to Vrindavan, I won't hear anything about you ever. Between Bengal and Vrindavan, there's a great distance and no one was walking back and forth that, that much. But they say that Bengal and Jagannath Puri are like two houses in the same room. They're that close. And I didn't realize just how close they were until a few years ago there was a cyclone fanny anyone remember that and it hit came up the, the coast and it hit puri first and then they were saying a matter of hours later it was going to be in mayapur and everyone was really upset it was quite a, a big storm quite a, a big deal and uh that cyclone had actually snapped the flag from the top of Jagannath's temple. And then everybody was really upset. As far as bad omens are to go, that was not a great one for anyone. They were saying this has never happened in over a hundred years and so many things and all what is, what's gonna be. And at the same time, there was a pandemic and all these things and it was terrible. Everyone was thinking this is clearly the end of days. Luckily, Lord Jagannath protected everything. Especially, I feel like for me, who was in the U.S., it's easy for me to look and say, Lord Jagannath protected everything. I was not in the midst of that storm, losing power, home, family members, etc. So, that was my understanding of just how close the two were. And I was kind of thinking of this situation where Sachimata says to, to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you make your headquarters in Jagannath Puri, then I'll hear about you often. There are constantly people coming back and forth from there. I can hear about you. I can see what you're up to. I can make sure you're okay. Please just make your headquarters in Puri. The same Krishna who was in Vrindavan has now come to Puri. Jagannath is there. You can see him often, please. And so... Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sets up his headquarters in Puri, thus making the best use of a bad bargain for all of the devotees who were so incredibly sad about him taking sannyas. 
For Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this was the best use of bad bargain because he just wanted to be with Krishna. But now every day he would be able to see Lord Jagannath. Every day would be like a festival. Every day would give joy to the hearts of the devotees. So what about this story of Lord Jagannath? We heard one of the manifestations of Lord Jagannath as this Mahabhav Prakash in a different way. Right? This, this form of ultimate divine love where the Lord's eyes get dilated his arms kind of shrink into his body. And he is so excited and so filled up with love for the gopis and for his devotees that he takes upon this most worshipable form. We also heard how Narada was pleading, oh my Lord, I've already seen it. You've tried to hide this form from me, but I've seen it already. Just let this form of yours be worshipped. But now what does this have to, how did we get to the carrying the Lord on chariots. So once, Krishna thought to make the best use of a bad bargain. There was to be a solar eclipse, which are, they're considered highly inauspicious. But Krishna, with his supreme wisdom, thinks, if I go to the holy place of pilgrimage and I take bath there, then it will make the best use of a bad bargain. We see when there was a lunar eclipse, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was making his advent, all of the devotees would go to the Ganga and they would chant. Right? Making the best use of this inauspiciousness. Likewise, Krishna thinks, let me make the best use of such inauspiciousness. Now Krishna is a big, big advisor, a prince in Dwarka. I hesitate to say king because they all accepted him as the king, but because of a curse and so many different things, the Yadavas could not hold a seat on the royal throne. So Maharaj Ugrasena was actually king, but everybody was under the understanding that Krishna is really the one pulling all the strings and calling all the shots. They would all go to him for any and all royal purposes. So now he's a big, big royal person. He is Dwarkadish, but he is forever thinking of his dearest Vrindavan Vasis. But Vrindavan is in present day Dwarka. Uh, Dwarka is in present day Gujarat, sorry. Vrindavan is in present day Uttar Pradesh. The two are not so close. But Krishna thinks the holy place of pilgrimage, Kurukshetra, is halfway between. If I make the best use of a, of a bad bargain, I can not only do wonderful, pious activities for this solar eclipse, but I can also call the bridge bosses. And so he sends a letter to his family members. We should take this pilgrimage to Kurukshetra. He also sends a letter to the bridge bosses with his intentions. I am intending to make a pilgrimage to Kurukshetra on this occasion of the solar eclipse, I think maybe all of you should also make a pilgrimage to the holy place of Kurukshetra on the occasion of this solar eclipse. So now a solar eclipse, which is inauspicious, looks like it's to be a festival. As Krishna hoped and planned, everything went off without a hitch. Krishna and the Dwarka Vasis arrive at Kurukshetra, and so do the Bridge Vasis. Krishna's heart knows no bounds. His excitement is so overflowing. He is so happy to see all of the Bridge Vasis, which many, many people say he hasn't seen in a hundred years. Imagine a 100 year gap. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that feeling the separation from Govinda, he is feeling a moment to be like 12 years or more. Actually, the Sanskrit is a yuga. Yuga yitam. A yuga. Each moment feels like a yuga. 
How can I maintain my life? Now, now this place is a festival place. Kurukshetra is also famous for being a place where Parshuram let go of his anger, washed his hands of all of these gory battles that he had engaged in, 21 generations of killing Kshatriyas. So there are many, many lakes of blood in this place, five lakes. And so you think, how could this battlefield area with five lakes of blood then become a place of the greatest festival? Because Krishna. This is how we make the best use of a bad bargain. We've got solar eclipse and lakes of blood and battlefields and all these things, and Krishna is going to make it the place of the most supreme festival that anyone has ever seen. When he arrives there, he touches the feet of his mother and father, finally gets to see Yashoda Devi, Nanda Maharaj, hugs them. They smell his head. They treat him as though he's still that little boy, even though he's a, he's a big, big man now, with children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all of these family members. He's gotten married, done all of these things, and they still treat him like their little Kana, that's it. So if you've ever thought, I've gone out and made a big name for myself and then I go home and I'm still just their little child. You're not alone. Krishna also. Even God can't get away from that. And so he is smothered affectionately in love. And finally, he goes through several days before he can meet the gopis. But when he meets them, they look at him and they think, this doesn't look the same. I, I don't know what's happening, all this crown business that's going on here. The peacock feather doesn't even look the same. There's no flute. You've got on all this armor. We long to see the Lord of our heart, Vrindavan Chandra. We are lo longing to see that cowherd boy with a beautiful turban, with, with forest flowers, and gunja berries, and peacock feathers. We are longing to see our Krishna with his garland made of five different colors of flowers hanging to his knees. A beautiful golden dhoti wrapped around his waist. His ornaments are those of the forest, not of the palace. Playing on a flute, standing in a threefold bending form. We want to see that form. And of course, how could Krishna not oblige his devotees? And within their hearts, they behold the form which is most dear to them. So if you've ever gone to a home temple after some time and you think, you don't look the same. Sometimes new pujards. Sometimes new ways of doing things. And we're thinking, oh Krishna, you don't look the same. Where's my Krishna who would wear his turban this way? Where's my Krishna who would hold his flute this way? Things look a little different for you. Krishna is giving us a taste of this pastime. We are actually the most fortunate if we get just a small fraction of a taste of that pastime. Then we can go within our hearts and have darshan of the form that we hold most dear. That temple, that darshan is always available. And so the gopis say, we long to put you on the chariot of our hearts and drag you back to Vrindavan and never let you go. We long for those, those nights where we would run from our homes and then the full moon would be shining. That would be our only light. We long for those times where you would call us with our very own flute song and where we would dance with you for hours and hours and hours where a day of Brahma felt like just one evening, where now every moment feels like a day of Brahma. And so it said that the gopis would place him on the chariots within their hearts, and they lovingly pulled him back to Vrindavan. This is the mag magic of Ratyatra. Where are we pulling Krishna? 
Do we know? Do we have any intention? Sachinandan Maharaj is very much about devotional service with intention. We should have some intention behind it, our japa, our kirtan, our service. We can live these pastimes, not simply hear them, but live them. And we can set those intentions anytime we are in a ratyatra, or even just watching one. Ratyatra in Puri is coming up soon. Uh, for those of us, I think it is next Thursday, India time next Thursday. So for some of us, it might start Wednesday evening. And what they do is they usually have a live webcast. For several, several years, they've had live webcast of Ratyatra. And the very beginning of Ratyatra is my absolute favorite part of Ratyatra. If I watch nothing else, I try to watch the beginning. Where all of the devotees have rushed to the temple of Lord Jagannath and they are bringing him out in procession. To see Lord Jagannath come out dancing and swaying amongst so many devotees, amongst a thunderous accompaniment of drums and gongs and, and all kinds of things. There are families of people who have studied how to play this gong for the procession of Lord Jagannath at the beginning of Ratyatra. Generations. Imagine, for generations of your family, this was your service. It is a matter of pride. It is the greatest thing to do with our lives. And so we might think, oh, that person is just a gong player. No, their claim to fame, their entire life is centered. Yes, we are the gong players. So it just goes to show that no service is too small. Not when it comes to Lord Jagannath. So if you are able to, and I'll try and put a reminder on, on the web, wherever I can, it is such a wondrous, beautiful, miraculous thing to watch. To see this procession of Lord Jagannath and to see how it, because it takes hours. It takes hours to move them. And to even sit and read the chapters on Ratyatra from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alongside watching this procession. You can really feel those pastimes come to life. It is absolutely the most wonderful thing. So this coming week, we'll, we'll, we'll keep each other engaged and locked in. And there are so many instances. I feel like this entire pastime of Lord Jagannath is how to make the best use of a bad bargain. There was a king named Indra Dumna, and he longed to see the Lord face to face. He said, no, 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 no. I've heard about this meditation business. I want to see the Lord face to face. He was depressed. No one could tell him any way to see the Lord face to face in that same body. Finally, there is a Brahmin who says, I've heard there is a deity named Nila Madhava. If you can go find this deity, you will see Krishna face to face. He sends out his trusted Brahmin friend Vidyapati, who then journeys to far, far away. And he winds up in a village of pig herders. When he winds up in this village of pig herders, he meets the king. He marries the daughter of the king of the pig herders. He establishes a life there. One might think, did you forget why you were on this, this, this worldwide tour in the first place? And finally, he sees that there's something very peculiar. This house of the pig herder and the pig herder himself, whose name is Vishvavasu, he does not smell like a pig herder. Every day he comes back smelling celestially like sandalwood fragrances and incense and flowers and all of these celestial fragrances which are unknown to this material world. How does a pig herder not smell like all of the pigs that he's been herding? 
And so he begins to question his wife, my dear wife, where does your father go every day? She says, I don't know, I can't tell you. So well, you can't hide things from your husband, really. And so he kind of cajoles her into telling him. And finally she says, well, he goes to worship the deity of Lord Nila Madhava every day. And when he comes back, this is why he smells so great. This is the, the fragrance that you smell within our home. This is the fragrance of our lives. And he says, aha, I've been looking for this Nila Madhava. So finally he begs and he begs and he begs and he begs. And finally Vishvavasu says, okay, I'll take you. But you must be blindfolded. Vishvavasu intensely guards the love of his life, the Lord of his life. It's a lesson for all of us to look at that intensity. Are we guarding the Lord of our lives or are we haphazard with him? Yeah, yeah, sure, he's there. Yeah, yeah, I guess everybody can see him, no problem. Vishvavasu is saying, this is the Lord of my life, not just anybody can go there. Finally, he takes him blindfolded. But Vidyapati drops some mustard seeds along the way. And when he gets there, they see the deity of Lord Nila Madhava. And then the deity begins to speak to Vishvavasu and Vidyapati. Oh, Vishvavasu, you have served me faithfully for so long. Now I desire to be worshipped by the king, and so you will no longer see me in this form again. What? Why? Krishna, why? You can appear in any form that you want at any time. Why this? Why? And then the deity of Nila Madhava disappears. Vishvavasu is enraged. This is all your fault, he tells Vidyapati. So much so that he ties him up in the forest. And he's expert at tying things. He's a pig herder. Ties him up in the forest, never to be released. We'll see if you get back to tell your king this business. Vidyapati lovingly gets untied by his wife. And he goes back and he tells King Indrajimna. And when they go in search of the deity of Lord Nilamadava, they find that he is not there. Indrajimna then captures Vishvavasu and then ties him up. Imprison him. He must have done this. There's a big argument between the two camps of worshippers and finally there is another voice from this guy don't worry neither of you will see me in this form again but i will appear as daru brahma a log of wood floating in the sea when that log of wood arrives get carvers to make my form and then build me a temple on the blue hill known as niladri Now, my sister and I have often asked this question, Krishna, if you could do anything, and if you were going to appear in a completely different form anyway, then you could have stayed as Nila Madhava, couldn't you? I mean, you could have made a situation where everyone's hearts were happy. Isn't that what you were supposed to do? Why? What is this? Vishvabasu and Maharaj Indrajumna become two lineages that become the worshippers of Lord Jagannath forevermore. Those very strong personalities who are the only ones who are able to carry Lord Jagannath out of the temple are said to be the descendants of Vishvavasu. And those Brahmanas who are chanting mantras and who are able to be the pujaris of Lord Jagannath are said to be descendants of Vidyapati and the descendants from King Indrajumna's line. So somehow everyone is making the best use of this bad bargain. But this is Krishna consciousness. The obstacles come, the reversals come, all of these things happen. How do we make the best use? As we surrender to Krishna, we are seeing every opportunity as an opportunity to serve, as my Guru Maharaj likes to say. Then we are constantly making the best use of this bad bargain. And this is the magic of Lord Jagannath. This is the magic of Ratyatra. This is how we remember. We are just trying to make the best use of whatever we've got. The bad times are sure to come. Right? The Vaishnavas, they expect the hard times. And so then that means that we can always be on the lookout how to make the best use of this situation. Where is Krishna? 
And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always looking, where is Krishna? The gopis were always looking, where is Krishna? King Indradumna was always looking, where is Krishna? And then Vishvavasu and all of his descendants were constantly looking, where is Krishna? Where is that Nilamada? Where is the Lord of my life in this situation? How can I serve? How can I please the Lord of my life and the devotees? And thus, how can we be enjoyed by the Lord of our lives? When Jagannath sees us, will he stop his cart just for us? He has a habit of doing that for his devotees. Many, many times, there are so many pastimes where Lord Jagannath has stopped his cart and waited for devotees, refuses to move until such and such devotee has arrived. He would often stop his cart and wait for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to catch up during the procession of Rathyatra festival. They would have a dance and a back and forth, a tug of war of love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would somehow fall behind and Lord Jagannath would wait. Because, now one would think, how is this possible? It's because, as we spoke about, in tradition in Puri, Baladev goes first. Right? Remembering this wonderful pastime, Baladev goes first, then there's Subhadra Mai, then Jagannath. And so, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would fall behind and Jagannath would stop. And the devotees, hundreds of thousands, millions of devotees would pull and try as they might, Lord Jagannath refuses to move until Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come dancing forward. Then Lord Jagannath would move. They would be in a dance with one another. And then Lord Jagannath would sometimes wait. What will my Mahaprabhu do? And then Mahaprabhu would stop and wait for Jagannath to begin moving. And then he would move again. So in sync they were with one another. What will our Jagannath see when we come before him? Will he wait for us? Of course he will. But will we, will we compel him to wait for us with our love? All it takes is that love. Even while making the best use of the bad bargain of these lives, these lives will have hiccups, ups and downs and obstacles and turnarounds, and we will think, oh, I'm not even doing the right thing, but, but I do have love in my heart for you, Lord Jagannath. I may not be perfect at chanting. In fact, I'm probably most likely not perfect at chanting. These rounds are slurred. The words are misspoken. The pronunciation's all off. I may not be able to do any of this perfectly, but I have some love for you in my heart. With that intention, Lord Jagannath will wait. He will wait for us on this journey of life. Lord Jagannath will never ever leave us behind. And just when we think, oh, maybe I've wasted all this time, I have, but oh my Lord, I have a little bit of love for you and now I'm remembering it. Jagannath waits. That, that gets his attention. Oh. He turns with his big, big, big eyes just to look for all of that love that we have within our hearts. Even if there's one speck there, Jagannath's eyes are so big, he will find it. Always makes me think of Little Red Riding Hood. He's telling the wolf, oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. I feel like, oh, Jagannath, what big eyes you have. And he's responding, the better to see you with. And not to see the faults, but to find any tiny speck of love that's there. Jagannath will find it. The better to see you with. This is our Lord. This is the Lord of our lives. He will wait for us. And the moment we show him some eagerness, some love, some affection, he's even more eager to wait for us. This is how we make the best use of a bad bargain not considering the faults anymore. We are doing the best we can. But now we can focus on, I'm doing the best I can, but my Lord, I have some love for you. And in that moment, magic happens. Miracles occur. So on this wonderful Ekadashi, I hope that we look forward with anticipation, eagerness, enthusiasm, determination, 
we look forward to this Ratiatra festival. We can all take part. No matter where we are in the world, we can watch the procession of Lord Jagannath. We can read those pages from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and, and just dive in. We can live these pastimes. And we can know that we can put the Lord on the chariot of our heart and pull him back to Vrindavan to have pastimes with us forever and evermore. Sri Kadashi Titi Ki Jai. Thank you so much. Hi. What a wonderful class. This is a bad bargain. Sometimes we, we're in this world, in the material world, tied up, trapped. We may even smell, you know, we're all pig farmers at times here. But if we take to Krishna, mm -hmm. then the smell goes away. That's my takeaway. Smell goes away. My pig far farmer smell goes away. Right. In fact, we once, we have this hostel on a Avenue that we were taking care of. It's all devotee run a facility. And we once hosted a group of big farmers from the Netherlands. They were very loud. No smell, no smell <laughs> detected, but they were loud, loud. Yeah, big farmers, we had experience with that. And that's what they say. Even in the pastimes of Lord Jagannath, they say that Vishwavasu and all of the pig, they're very loud. They're very, like, it's, it's a very rowdy bunch of a village of people and so it's very interesting to see this aristocratic vidyapati with his wife who's just so down to earth and really like you know whatever it, 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 we're here and she's just happy to serve and and there with all of her heart what an amazing match very unconventional but i always loved that match yeah yeah we're here to serve we're here to give we're not here to enjoy our control. Okay, we can take one burning reflection or question from our esteemed audience. There's no question I'm going to call out. I'm calling out for Mishra Naik. Mishra Naik, what's your reflection? What's your takeaway? Is our Srila Prabhupada Army General? Mm. Mishra Naik, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, First of all, that was pronounced to Mataji, and it was really emotional. And in fact, it was many, many things which has come out like Vidya Bhakti, how they have gone, how they have found out the uh, surroundings, and how they have behaved there. It was really emotional. And once again, that was pronounced. And it was a really wonderful, memorable lecture for me. Thank you. Wish for night to move. Is Srila Prabhupada's voice manifesting in him? And uh, we, have a we have a question in the chat. Uh, Saradiya Rasa is asking, in the past times when Lila Madhava disappeared, the devotees started blaming each other and fighting. Is that a question? Saradiya Rasa, would you like to unmute yourself? Yeah. <laughs> was, was the Lord, however, responsible for this? Can we learn from this? Asking. Yeah, what can we learn from this? Uh, my Guru Maharaj often pulls up this and many, many other situations. And what he always says is, so there will be infighting. <laughs> he always says in the most matter-of-fact way, don't, there will be fighting. There will be arguments. Uh, how, how often have we seen arguments between devotees? And we are thinking, this brings great pain to my heart. How can this be reconciled? And there was no one that could reconcile it except for Lord Jagannath. And it is because Lord Jagannath comes and he has many voices from the sky, wait, stop, don't imprison each other. You will not see me in this form again, but I will come in another form. Now do this, 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 and this, and he gives them all instructions. And so it is in that, in that way that he makes the arrangement that Vishvavasu's lineage is not forgotten. Nor is Vidyapati and Indrajumna Maharaj's lineages, they are not forgotten. And so he makes a way. He makes a situation and he makes a place, a specific place in his pastimes for everyone. But there will be fighting. It's the material world. 
It is not just Kali Yuga that had quarrel or hypocrisy or any of these things. It's a material world issue. So we shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking. Oh, Satya Yuga, everything, it was all better. Everything was fine. You hear about a great many demons, even from Satya Yuga, who have killed off the entire Kshatriya race. Brahmins fled, everybody else fled. And then what to do? There were big, big, there were big, big demons, and they had to all pray, and then the Lord, and then everything, and then there's a new form, and something has to happen, and then this is Satya Yuga. This killing, all the things that are happening, that we're thinking, oh, how, how horrible it's been happening. It's not just a symptom of Kali Yuga. There's Kali Yuga symptoms, but also material world side effects. So the quarreling is that this is a material world side effect. Also, these things add the flavor and the spice to all of these pastimes. Krishna is nothing if not dramatic. In fact, the many, many pastimes of Lord Jagannath are called Jagannath Priyanatakam. The beloved drama of Lord Jagannath. If that doesn't let you know that it's going to be dramatic already, I don't know what does. It's part of the title. His Leela, these pastimes, are drama-filled. The gopis even, they're looking at him and thinking, what, what, what kind of person are you to fall in love with? Sometimes you're here, sometimes you're gone, sometimes you arrive, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have us here and we're happy, and sometimes you reject us and we're crestfallen. What kind of person are you? Do you even have emotions? And Krishna is saying, but, but I have so many devotees and they're all depending on me. And they're saying it. And then sometimes you tell us you're the supreme person and you can manifest from every heart. And then sometimes you tell us you have so many devotees, you have to personally take care of them. What nonsense is this? And they take Krishna to task so much that finally, I can't repay you. So all of these devotees, between the lineages of Vishvavasu and Vidyapati and Indra Maharaj, there were generations in between when the reconciliation happened. Because after the deities of Jagannath are carved, they want to have a, and build a big temple, make this festival of Ratyatra happen. But Maharaj Indra has to go all the way to the heavenly planets to accomplish this. Time is different. When he gets to the heavenly planets and he speaks to celestial beings, and then he comes back, he finds that no one no one that he knew was even alive anymore. What do we learn from this? Sometimes we will see fighting between Vaishnavas. Sometimes the reconciliation looks as though it's going to take generations. Srila Prabhupada says in the ninth, canto, uh, ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita that endeavoring with determination is key. Simply endeavoring Endeavor doesn't mean to perfect. Endeavor means to try your best with determination. That constant determination that Krishna's miracles are coming. Sometimes it looks as though it takes generations, but Krishna never forgets. Krishna will always help us make the best use of a bad bargain if we turn to him. So the minute we turn our face, Krishna is eager to help us make the best reconciliation ever. Even if externally it looks like it takes generations. Because what he found was, generations later, these descendants of these wonderful devotees that he once knew, they kind of look the same. They're called by different names. They're saying, oh yes, that was my great, 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 great grandfather. No problem. But they look the same. And so when arranging for the temple, and when arranging for Ratiyatra festival, all of these devotees were included. Krishna did not forget any of them. And to this day, he has not forgotten the service of the pig herder, Vishvavasu, who is now famous for, for time immemorial. He is famous for perpetuity. Imagine that, a, a tribal man, right? A, a person who's an outcast, kind of, 
Not a very luxurious life, but he's famous and his descendants are famous. These descendants touch the body of Lord Jagannath. They take care of Lord Jagannath when he's sick, which maybe will be a whole thing for the next Ekadashi. All about Lord Jagannath's sickness, how Lord Jagannath gets well. But they are the ones that take care of Lord Jagannath as he's sick. This is the greatest fortune. So sometimes when we see this fighting, we should know that if we turn to Krishna, then the greatest mercy will come from that. If we turn to Krishna for reconciliation, the greatest mercy will come from that. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and I'll end with this, there is the story of Shakshi Gopal, which contained very much fighting between spiritually minded people. And one of them was quite confused. He was an old Brahmin. And it said that that old Brahmin was so confused and in that moment of confusion in his mind, he took shelter of the feet of Gopal, a deity of Krishna that he had seen in Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada remarks that this should be us. Whenever we are in moments of confusion and we need reconciliation, in our minds we can take shelter of the feet of Gopal, shelter of the feet of Krishna, shelter of Lord Jagannath, and we can ask him for help. And he will absolutely indeed help us. And then, even finding reconciliation, our arguments, any of those things become devotional service because we are trying to remember Krishna. We are trying to surrender even in those tough moments. So I hope that that was a satisfactory answer that yes, there will be fighting. We can't be surprised by it, but we can use those moments as a, as a moment to surrender and take shelter of Krishna. Thank you. No pain, no gain. Yeah. All right. Fighting is an opportunity to surrender. Can we hear on another occasion, Saradi Ras Hadevidas, he says, how Nila Madhava came to the Greek herders? Now that much I'm not sure. I'd have to research that and find out if there is a specific pastime. As far as I've heard it, as when Vidyapati got there, Vishwavasu had been worshipping Nila Madhava for quite some time. As far as I've heard it, because I heard that this deity was carved by Vishwakarma. And he had been there. Let me research it. Let's see. Let's see what comes up. Now that you've asked, we'll see what, what Nila Madhava himself wants to reveal. Yeah. Yeah, Nila Madhava himself will answer that question. That's what happens. We'll ask. Yeah, Lord. I'll ask Lord Jagannath. What, what do you want me to speak about? <laughs> How much do you want to reveal? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's wrap it up, Jay Devotees. Thank you very much. It will be a wonderful Akadashi session, very inspiring. Thank you, everyone, for participating actively, for contributing to this class. Mishra and I, especially, thank you very much for your reflections. Donna Kelly Prabhu, Susan, Suzanne, Kartik, Preeti, Ageshwari, Bhakta Ruh Prabhu, Akiko Chan, Angelico, Angelika, Arjuna Prabhu, Vimeshwari, wow, beautiful assembly, Gitan, Gitan Jalibi, Arush. And Margie, Saradi, Arasa, wonderful questions. Anna, Isabel, Spirit Soul, Will, Maharani, Didi, Ananya, Bhakti, Hare Krishna, everybody, love you all, and you all, and a beautiful day, beautiful life. Hare Krishna, Jagannath, Lord Jagannath, Kijai.